Well, hello, my lovely. It's Robbie here from Kickback Garage, admiring this beautiful uh, Norwegian Viking runes. And uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, why uh, do they place the church uh, beside these uh, Viking runes? What do you reckon? Does that sound like an interesting video? Nah, not really. What we're really going to talk about is this. I am out and about on my beautiful Series 1. We have obviously installed the uh, BGM Clubman pipe and that is what I'm going to talk about. So grab a coffee and I'll see you after the intro. <laughs> Messing around with these cameras, battery is going flat. My credit the merang, all the sprung in log of villa come in the talk. In your novice black out to other forty frog for what to do or draw. Can we phone can a sudden come at the husband to come as of the other brother last summer? Right. Like I said in my uh, last video, um I really want to give this uh, exhaust a good run for its money before I uh, come to any sort of conclusion. So this is going to be, uh, what can you call it, sort of a <laughs> initial impression review of the exhaust. Now, uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, because it's sort of, uh, it's, it's a, well, it, it's a box pipe really, but because it's got that curly um, function going on there with the, uh, with the exhaust uh, stub, you were wondering how ground clearance is, and I can uh, officially report that uh, I have been hammering these pointy sleeping policemen, and uh, the, r the particular rod that I'm on at the moment, it's beautiful here at the moment, isn't it? It's uh, nice and green. Um, this, this, there's got something that we call in Norway tail heave, so it's lots and lots of little bumps and ripples, and um, and some big ones too. And uh, if we take a quick look under the scooter you will see that the end pipe is tucked right up under the engine there. I'm just going to get down on my knees here and see if you can have a look. And the, the end pipe itself is maybe protruding about half a centimetre lower than the mag house. So that actually gives this uh, exhaust a lot better clearance than you would ever imagine. Now, the particular road that I'm uh, riding on today is very very it's notorious for potholes bumps uh holes stuff like that and uh it uh, i've been hammering it over those and even over the pointy uh, sleeping policeman or speed bumps if you will and uh had no issues with uh, ground, ground clearance whatsoever and another thing you'll notice is my microphone has died so i have had to take uh, the video footage home with me and uh, I'm doing a bit of a voiceover, which is really, really annoying. It takes twice the time that I really want it to. Uh, it's raining today, so uh, I was re I was actually hoping I could get out, back out on the scooter and film all this uh, once again. So I'll just let this footage go and I'll do a bit of narration, uh, sort of uh, David Attenborough style. And uh, let me tell you about uh, the exhaust of it. Now... The first bit I want to mention is jetting. With the CST3, I was running a AV268 uh, atomizer, and I was running uh, Obbull Needle from MB Scooters, which uh, is uh, an X13, a uh, rich version of an X13. I think it's called X13, X2, or something like that, but now I've put the X13 in there again. Uh, the Pilot Jet is uh, 57, uh, it's a little bit grumpy, uh, quarter, quarter range, like from zero to quarter uh, throttle, but uh, I like to have a, a, a quite large Pilot Jet, because if you're giving it full chat on the motorway, it's good to have that little bit extra when you turn off the throttle, that's just the way I like to set them up. Uh, I've also got the uh, 45 slide, and yeah, that's, uh, that's the jetting. So uh, what's coming up is uh, quite a bit of random footage, mostly from my uh, uh, 360 camera because when I ran out of petrol here, one thing you've got to remember to do uh, when you uh, when you're out testing uh, scooters and exhaust and stuff is turn on the bloody petrol. <laughs> 
<laughs> when I run out of petrol, <laughs> I uh, when I, and I kick starting the bike up again, I managed to knock the camera out of angle. So it's uh, basically just pointing at the floor, and the sound isn't working. So uh, <laughs> I've had a right nightmare with this. But never mind. I'll uh, throw up the. Uh, 360 footage and hopefully I'll be able to find the areas where I uh, Give it some welly and I'll explain how this exhaust works uh, One surprise one massive surprise Actually is the fact that this thing really really pulls um, It feels very much like the CST3 uh, curly I had on the uh, on the bike and uh, It sort of just sort of ironed out that blip that I had on it, but the uh, low down grunt and mid range performance is very, very similar. So, what a surprise, eh? So, let's uh, throw up the uh, 360 footage, and uh, I hope you really don't get nauseous because uh, I changed the camera angles quite a lot there. The idea was really to use my normal camera and just throw in the 360 footage uh, in between just uh, as a little bit of a spice. But anyway, here we go. We'll, uh, we'll uh, roll the camera. As you can see from uh, this first part of the footage here, you can, you can actually see uh, the camera bumping around um, because of the state of the uh, asphalt here. It's, uh, it's a real patchwork job. Lots of uh, small ripples and bumps and uh, potholes. And uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because with the CST3 Curly, I had to fit a uh, 315 rear shock to try and give me a bit more ground clearance. And it was uh, this road here in particular, where I was uh, dragging the tailpipe or the end can on the asphalt. But uh, now that I fit this uh, BGM uh, Sport Exhaust, I've uh, decided to fit uh, this original standard uh, shock of uh, uh, 310 millimeters. So just to make sure that this is a, a fair review when it comes to the ground clearance bit and I've had absolutely no issues. Uh, now that I'm back in the garage, I've looked under the uh, scooter and there's no sign that it's been uh, making contact. And I'm a chubby little fella, as you can see here. Another thing I want to mention is uh, what I forgot to mention to start off with. When it comes to jetting, I'm also running uh, the um, AV266 atomizer, which is uh, a slightly weaker one. And uh, the uh, main jet is a little, it's, it's a bit grumpy. It stops at around uh, 8,250 uh, RPM. Um, and that's nothing to do with the exhaust, I don't think. I'm gonna uh, obviously gonna uh, adjust this. I think the uh, the main jet is a bit too uh, a bit too rich because if I uh, gently uh, coax it through the revs, then uh, I have had it up to uh, 8,500 rpm. So right off the bat, this exhaust is really really impressive. Now we've got to remember this is a Clubman, but it, this this clubman here is uh, delivering power that equals um, the CST3. I'll just let this footage go here and uh, turn up the volume a little bit. And what I was finding was if I was pulling the throttle like I do on my Avanti equipped uh, RT240, then I'm, <laughs> I'm, I have to use the brakes uh, a lot uh, more often before I go into the corners because this thing is uh, a bit like uh, riding a wild <laughs> wild horse compared to uh, what I'm used to with, uh, with the Avanti. It uh, pulls very, very strongly. The torque is definitely up and I'd love to get this on a dyno, but uh, just see this, just have a look at this footage here. You can see that I uh, grab a fistful of throttle and I'm on the brakes before the next corner because it, it, the acceleration is almost the same as uh, what I had on the SS240 with this uh, new uh, BGM Clubman Sport Exhaust.
another area where this uh, exhaust shines is the hills. This particular hill here is a 10 to 1 gradient. It's the steepest hill in my, uh, my area. And you can drop the revs all the way down to around uh, 3000 and it still pulls. And when I get to the top of the crest here, as soon as it starts to uh, shallow out the hill, then uh, it, the response is just amazing. There is no like nothing. You just uh, pull on that throttle and uh, it just shoots away almost like uh, an expansion pipe or <laughs> basically it, it as i said before it, it does match my uh, cst3 uh, the difference between this and the cst3 is i haven't got that lag at three and a half thousand revs so uh, what i found on the cst3 is that you have to keep it over that over that three and a half uh, thousand rev area uh, preferably run around uh, 4,000 revs, but this thing just this just chugs along. You pull the throttle, you've got instant throttle response, no like, and uh, yeah, it's just wicked. It's wicked fun to uh, fun to ride on. Uh, it, it has um, really transformed the scooter. It's easier to ride, and uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of fun. And uh, that's the uh, surprising bit. This is a clubman, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a full-blown expansion, but uh, like I said, if I had the 300 quid it costs to uh, throw these two scooters uh, on uh, on my dyno, and it's actually an unfair advantage for the Avanti because uh, my uh, Avanti equipped scooter is uh, a 240 uh, revalve tuned uh, RT, whereas this is just a 230, and uh, I am absolutely in love with this exhaust. It really delivers on every level. While I roll the rest of the footage here, I, uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, first one is uh, the sound. Uh, the Avanti exhaust is uh, definitely louder when it's stood on the stand, but because of the uh, design of the uh, BGM Sport Clubman, um, the Encan is under your feet. So actually on the bike, the, uh, the BGM sounds just as loud as, uh, as the Avanti because it's a bit more in your face. Uh, if you stood by the side of the road, the uh, BGM is definitely quieter and that, I find that pretty amazing this thing pulls just like a uh, an expansion exhaust but it's not not as loud and nowhere near as loud as uh, my old uh, CST3 exhausts so uh, I'm not sure what sort of uh, trickery they have uh, come up with there to uh, dampen that sound but it's uh, it's uh, not that bad for uh, people stood at the side of the road it's not ear bleedingly loud but for the rider, yeah, it it's definitely sounds loud because it's uh, it's more in your face. It's right under your feet. Now uh, that doesn't really bother me uh, a lot. It, it sort of adds to the um, uh, feeling of the ride, if you want to put it that way. The, you know, you've got, it feels a little bit more leery, and uh, I'm uh, really, really looking forward to uh, get this uh, out on the road together with my son Shrek. Now Shrek, <laughs> he's got himself a job as a Corona tester, so he's, uh, he's working nights uh, outside the ferry testing uh, foreign visitors. So he's uh, quite hard to get hold of, but as soon as, uh, as soon as he's got a day off and he's awake, <laughs> I'm gonna get out on the road together with him because um, this pipe has really, really surprised me. I was expecting uh, big things, but uh, this thing, definitely delivers bigger things than I expected. The power delivery, it comes in earlier than uh, the CST3 and uh, it, it definitely pulls a lot, lot uh, harder than uh, the other <laughs> pipe I've, uh, I've got. That's the feeling at least, the first, uh, the first ride impression. So uh, I'm really, really looking forward to get these, as I said, both of them back to back on the road to see which the fastest is. This thing, it's uh, yeah, it's just amazing. It's a, it's a lot, a lot of fun. And uh, if you can live with the sound levels on the bike, 
uh, then uh, this is a great exhaust. I think actually this will work really well with kits like the Quattrini and uh, TS1 with the uh, load ports as well because uh, the, the power delivery is very smooth but it comes on hard and fast. Very very uh, cool exhaust, chuffed to bits with this. So uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, love you and leave you and uh, if you want to support the channel help me buy a new microphone. <laughs> <laughs> now that that one's died, you can uh, buy some uh, merchandise on my uh, spring store or you can uh, do the old uh, buy me a coffee. I really need to get hold of a microphone and uh, we have to rig those up, uh, two cameras and uh, get Shrek out on the road and give this a, a proper shootout between the BGM uh, Clubman Sport and the Avanti ST Xbox. ta -ra! Here we got the bumpy road for you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 speed uh, when it comes to uh, shooting up in the rev range, but it's, it is, it's, it feels okay to live with. Um, the uh, Avanti gives a bit more relaxed, uh, relaxed ride, if I'm going to be honest. This is a bit more, um, yeah, what can I say? She's egging me on a bit, to tell you the truth. She's like, come up into that rev range there about three and a half and she and she just like sort of begs for more throttle but here you go you can see it but this is a really really steep hill by the way obviously can't see that on on the camera but if I pull the throttle instant response no delay and I'm pleased to report there isn't that like uh, false uh, um, I was gonna say like that false ridge that there was on the uh, the chisel speed. The Avati doesn't have that either. It's it, it's giving power all the way through. And if you want to rev the tits off it, oh, it's it sort of gets away with me a little bit. It almost reminds me of uh, it sort of turned my uh, RT two thirty reed valve here into uh, the same sort of punchiness that I had on the SS240. Just uh, amazing, it's just such a naughty, naughty exhaust. It shouldn't really be this good, I don't understand what they've done. And then, here we go, like fourth gear. Just give it a little bit of throttle and it's going up these hills. Uh, really, 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 really well. Hmm. I'm really excited to see how how this compares to the Avanti. Uh, I have to say, um, I rode the Avanti yesterday. Just give it a wang. 8,000 to 3, okay, 8,300, damn it pulls, holy crap. <laughs>